Mrs. M. Priya Dashni, M.E. M.B.A. is doing PhD is currently working as teaching fellow in the department of IST Anna University Chennai she completed a masters in software engineering from Anna University she has about 10 years of experience in handling courses for UG and PG she was serving as technical evangelist for corporate over 4 years in java enterprise technologies software engineering databases WAD and design patterns she is proficient in handling IT projects as well into concept development for enterprises she is doing a research in the area of web services security her other areas of interest include software engineering WAD databases enterprise technologies and service oriented architecture She holds many journal publications and conference proceedings in our research area. Welcome to UGC lecture series in Computer Science Java Part 14. So in this session we are going to see about statement types of statements and few queries on these statements that could be executed on these statements. So in your previous session we have seen about what do you mean by driver and how to make a database connectivity so as a small recap so normally whenever you have any database or any dbms so it may be mysql it may be oracle it may be sql server any of the database just what we need to do is we have to write a java program in which we pass on the queries these queries with the help of the driver that is provided by java is converted into particular dbms specific Uh, methods and then the result of that will be given back to your java so the drivers that we use we have seen there are four types of drivers so based on the requirements we'll choose any of these drivers and then try to connect to a particular dbms and get connected and then we try to execute the statements so as a first stage we have seen what is connection how we are going to make a connection all these steps we have seen already so next is your stage 2 where you are going to write your queries and also we have seen few things about statement also now we'll see in a query in your second stage query so we create a statement and query the database so we assume that already the connection is made with respect to a particular dbms and then user id password and the connection is now ready and then on this connection object we are trying to create statements and execute these statements so first we'll see about the statement object so you can see that a statement object sends your sql statement to the database we need an active connection to create a jdbc statement statement has three methods to execute a sql statement execute query for query statements execute update for insert update delete and ddl statements and execute for either type of statements so on connecting to your database on connecting to your database we can create statement objects these statement objects are the method through which you can send your sql statements those statements will get executed and the results will be obtained as a result of that particular method call so now that method call could be done only on a connection active connection so we have three methods whereas execute execute update and execute query so you know what is a query a query is an sql statement so i if at all i'm going to execute an sql statement that to a query is particularly a select statement a statement which is going to retrieve some values from the database and it will return you with some values so whenever i write execute query normally it will be select query and then if at all i use execute update some updates that is to be done on the database is executed through this execute update so i can say that creation insertion deletion and all the other manipulations everything will update the status of the database as well as the values in the database so i can use execute update method in that case and in general i can call execute method where i can go in for a query or i can go in for executing any ddl or dml statements so only the return type of these differs whenever i execute a query the return type will be a result set whenever i execute an update it will be whether true or false and whenever i execute update 
So, in that case I will have whether my particular uh, update has made changes in that, that I will get it as a boolean value. So, I can go in for any one of these three options. So, you can see here how to query the database. So, create an empty statement object. So, I am creating a statement object. So, already we have seen that we have made a connectivity with a, with a particular database. So, connection dot create statement. At this point, your statement exists, but it does not have an SQL statement to pass on to the DBMS. So, you can see that there is no argument, it is an empty statement. So, it means that I am trying to create a statement object which is going to be executed on a particular connection. So, I am first creating a statement object on the statement object I will try to execute various queries. So, the same STMT could be used for many execution of many queries. So, that queries is nothing but the execution of your methods in your statement. So, you can see here we have execute update. So, here execute update is supplied with, the, with an SQL statement. So, you can see that here we have an SQL statement. So, this statement is a DDL statement. So, data definition language statement. So, here we are trying to create a table. So, we are trying to create a table, table name and then parameters. Pa for each parameter, I have the name of the parameter, I have the data type and then if any constraints need to be set to these parameters I can very well set or constraint need to be set to the table also I can set. Whereas, here we do not have any constraints being set just we are trying to create a table, table named coffees where we have coffee name, your supplier ID, price and then sales and total. So, these parameters or fields will be created in the table called coffees and this will be updating your status of the database that is a new table has been created in your database. So, as a result of this execution we will have an integer value which specifies that whether you are so it will be 0 or it will be 1. So, where once if I create I was able to create the statement so the value will be set to 1 otherwise the value will be set to 0. From this I can identify whether the table is created or not and in Java you have exception handling mechanism also where you have SQL exception that could be raised and we can find out what is the reason that you were not able to create the table. So, this could be put inside a try block and then I can catch the SQL exception. Even I can catch the exception for creating a connectivity and all that. So, all these exceptions are again available in your java.sql package. So, this is for a DDL statement. So, what happens the, a table will be created and you know that there are uh, two types of tables. One is tables created by the user and other one is tables that is created by the system. So, your system tables will be updated as well as the user table will also be created. So, user table is created and the system table is updated. So, once I create a table, so in that case one entry will be in the system table called user underscore tables and as well as there will be updations in all other tables like user underscore constraints where all the constraints will be inserted. And one new table is created so that it is an empty table we can keep on inserting the values and do all manipulations on the table. You can see that here how to query the database next we are trying with an other query the following code inserts one row of data with Columbian in the column coffee name 101 in supplier ID 7.99 in price and 0 in sales and 0 in total. So, you can see that this statement is going to update your data in the table. So, this is going to insert a value in the table. So, insert into table name values. I give values for all the fields. So, normally if it is in uh, where care type, so we have to put it inside the single quotes and then all the other values you can put it directly. And on execution of this statement, whenever I execute this statement, one row will be inserted, one row of values will be inserted in the table and this returns a value of 1. It means that we have inserted 1. So, in case if you are doing any other DML like updation, a deletion, so in that case updation could be done and here since it is insert there will be only one value inserted into the table and this will return 1. Whereas, if I do update or else if I do delete all these options there is a possibility that I can update multiple rows of data in my table, rows of data in my table. So, in that case my 
row count will be nothing but the number of rows that gets affected by execution of this particular statement. So, whenever I query the database till now we have seen how to do a DM, DDL and we have seen how to do an DML. So, data definition language and data manipulation language we have seen a sample. In case if you are trying to query your database, so query as I told you is nothing but a select statement which is going to return something as a result. So, in that case at the left hand side of my uh, particular statement I will have a result set. So, this result set will be uh, filled with the values that is which is obtained as a result of your particular query that is executed at the right hand side. You can see that to retrieve values from the table use the execute query. The JDBC API returns results in a result set object. So, we need to declare a result set object at the left hand side of the method call to hold our results. So, in this case I have an uh, interface result set this interface object is created and then I will try to execute the query through statement. So, here we are only seeing about the statement. So, I have already created a statement. So, connection the same statement could be used in order to execute your method call execute update or a method call execute or a method called execute query. So, I can use any of the particular methods. So, methods could be different but the statement is same. So, same statement could be iteratively used for various other purposes. Here you can see that the following code demonstrate declaring the result set object rs and assigning the results of our earlier query to it. So, you can see that based on your earlier created table I am writing a query. So, which retrieves coffee name and price from the table. So, here I have two columns. So, one coffee name is a column of data type string that is your where care with respect to DBMS it will be where care whereas with respect to Java it is string. So, the data types differs from programming languages as well as DBMS we have to properly match those data types. So, here a coffee name is a string whereas with respect to DBMS it is a where care value and price is a float value whereas there we have given it as numeric with uh, precision. So, here you can see that these two values are retrieved from the table. So, this will be assigned to result set object. So, now your result set object has a set of rows with two columns. First column holding the string that is your coffee name and second column holding the price of that particular coffee. So, now I have my first variable to be string and next variable to be float. But whereas, whenever I am retrieving it through my result set even if you can directly give result set dot get string I can access both of them as a string or if I know particularly what type of data type is used in that particular table. So, whenever I retrieve a value if I know in prior what data type has been retrieved I can just use the exact method called return int return float like that. Otherwise just I can give get string and this get string will return a value of string and then you can convert that into any other data type and then you can process it because whenever you retrieve it you can retrieve it as a string, but whenever you use it for manipulations you need to convert that into particular data type. So, on knowing that this particular column is going to provide me with a particular int value it is always better to use get int method and then I can access the value. So, we have various methods in the result set interface which could uh, allow you to access those particular data type that is available. So, you can see that this is once you finish this result set. So, it means that I am accessing it. So, in stage 3 we have seen accessing the result. So, here already we have seen about how to connect, how to query a database and then next is your process result. So, in your process results we have two things that could be done one is accessing your result and other one is processing your result. So, while I access the result set I have a method next that moves cursor to the next row and makes that row called the current row the one upon which we can operate. Successive invocations of method next move the cursor forward one row at a time from the first row to the last row. So, it means that your result set has n number of rows that is retrieved as a result of your query. 
So, once your query returns a result set, what I will do is I will try to have a result set which is going to have an active collection of the rows that is retrieved as a result from your query. So, once I retrieve it, I call a method called next. So, the next method will retrieve the first row of that particular query result that we have obtained. So, first row on giving rs dot next only we will be able to access the first row and I can keep on uh, consecutively giving a next method or calling the next method will allow me to navigate through all the rows till the end of the row. So, this rs dot next will retrieve me with the boolean value true provided if I have any row. And then if I do not have row, this will return a false value. So, on moving my cursor to that particular row, I will be able to operate on the values that is available in the particular row. In that row, I may have n number of columns. If I know the particular data type, just I can give the data type and get the values. If I am not aware of what is the name of the particular column, then I can use the index in order to identify that particular column. So, index could be used or particular column name should be used in order to access a particular column from the query result that has been obtained from your statement. So, we were discussing about a statement how to create a statement and how to execute a statement and we will have a no, now we will have a short break and then continue with all the other types of statements and how to execute the statements. Welcome back after the break. Now, we will continue with the session on statements and how to process queries on the statements. So, this method can be used in a while statement because it returns true as long as the cursor is on a valid row as I told you. When the cursor goes beyond the last row, the method next returns false. I told you that it will return a boolean value. So, thereby terminating the while loop. So, you can see here we have a string. So, query I am writing a particular query and then I am storing that into a string called query. So, why normally we use this is whenever I write a query, if I want to, so here it is a static query, the query which does not have any parameters that need to be attached or we need not concatenate anything, directly I have assigned the query. So, in this case I can assign it to a string and then on my statement just I can give that particular uh, string value and then execute it. Later on what I can do? I can also use another uh, string. So, for same query I can write another query and then pass that to variables. If I statically write that particular query inside my statement. So, in that case if I want to do another query execution again I have to write the entire query inside that particular statement that is the parameter for the statement. So, here you can see that result set rs is equal to stmt. So, we know already we have created the statement and then I am executing a query passing this. So, I am selecting these two value. Now, you can see that your rs one on execution of this statement, this result set will be pointing towards the set of rows that is obtained as a result of executing this query. So, now while rs dot next I am moving my pointer to the first row of that particular result set object. So, now this method get string will return me a string value of a particular variable. So, this is my column name that is available in my table. So, when I give the column name that is available in my table. So, here you can see I have used two column names one is cof n underscore name and price. So, these two will be returned as a result of this execution. So, I am accessing the first column with the column name and then I am trying to get the value and then next is float value n is float. Here I already told you that in Java you have float whereas in SQL it will be numeric with a particular precision being given. So, here float n is equal to rs dot get float. I am calling a method get float and I have given a parameter price here. So, here I am trying to print 
s that is the string value name plus underscore and then n value. So, all these will be concatenated and you will print you will get your value to be printed. So, this loop will be executed until I come to the end of the particular result set that means, when I come to the last row. So, whereas, if I just have my result set if I want to access the values even if my result set has only one particular row as a result in that case too I have to execute an rs dot next then only I can access the values of that result set because it means that whenever I call next method only my cursor moves to the first row. So, just if I write a result set and I try to fetch the values you will not be if I mean you will not be fetched with any values and this will raise an exception for you because you do not have any values being available on that particular rs dot get string or rs dot get floor whatever the value it is because our result set is there, but I have not moved my cursor to my first position. So, I will not be able to access that particular row. So, next is the JDBC API offers two ways to identify the column from which a getter method gets a value. One way is to give the column name. So, your previous example we have seen that we have used column name called coffee name and price in order to access the particular columns. Whereas, the second way is to give column index the number of the column with 1 signifying the first column comma 2 signifying your second column and so on. So, you can see here the same query we have used the same result set. Now, I am trying to access it using rs dot get string of 1 provided if I do not know the column name just I can give 1, 2 and I can access it. And also in some cases I may have some aggregate values being generated. So, for example, I may have sum of salary. So, sum of salary is not a particular field. So, I do not have any field name for that. So, in that case what I can do is just I can specify the column name. So, otherwise if I am very clear with the column name even sometimes what they do is they give an alias name for your particular. So, I, I give sum of salary and then I give an field name called sum. So, and then I can access it using the column name called sum. So, it means that whatever the column name that you have given as alias name could also be used or the name of the particular column could be used or you can even use the number of the column. So, normally it never starts from 0 it starts from 1. So, whereas in array and all we start from 0, 1, 2, 3 whereas here you have to start from your first column, second column and so on. So, next is prepared statement. So, if you want to execute a statement object many times it will normally reduce the execution time. So, when same statement has to be executed again and again. So, in that case each and every time I write the create statement and then I try to execute that it will be compiled each and every time. So, even the same query with multiple values need to be executed what I do I each and every time unnecessarily compile it and then use it. So, instead of that we have an option called prepared statement. So, the main feature of prepared statement object is that unlike a statement object it gives an SQL statement when it is created. So, you have seen that in create statement I will create a statement with an empty parameter. I mean I do not I will create only with an empty statement whereas, instead of giving some parameters and after that whenever I execute that particular query I give the particular query which need to be executed on that particular statement. Whereas, in case of prepared statement whenever I prepare the statement itself I try to assign all the values that need to be available for that particular execution. So, and then after that I will just try to execute that particular query. So, whenever I run that particular query it, it will be a pre compiled one. So, already would, it would have been compiled and each and every time I am going to only execute that. I am not compiling it each and every time. So, it will be compiled once and whenever I execute it it get ex only executed with different set of values. So, whenever I write a static query. So, for example, in your application you always need to select set of rows from a table. So, in that case I need not use prepared statement and in case if I want to dynamically assign some value. So, I want to access only the employees who belong to a particular department. So, each and every time I change the department ID for which the employees need to be generated. In that case I have to dynamically supply the values or else if I am using just the statement I have to construct the statement with that particular dynamic value and I will try to execute it. 
So, even in that case it will be compiled each and every time whereas, in case of prepared statement only once it will be compiled it will be a pre compiled one and then I keep on executing with various set of values. So, your prepared statement statement object contains not just an SQL statement, but an SQL statement that has been pre-compiled. When a prepared statement is executed, the DBMS can just run the prepared statements SQL statement without having to compile it. So, here this prepared statement could also be used for SQL statements with no parameters also. The advantage of using SQL statements that take parameter is that you can use the same statement and supply it with different values each time you execute it. So, this is so in real time scenarios we normally go in for using the prepared statement provided if I want to pass some values to the query which I am going to execute. So, I can also query it based on various values. So, here is an example creation of a prepared statement object that takes two input parameters. So, I have a prepared statement name of the prepared statement object. So, connection dot prepare statement. So, I have already told you that whenever I prepare the statement itself I give the query that need to be executed. So, update coffees set sales is equal to a particular value where coffee name is equal to a particular value. So, this question mark means that these two values will be assigned dynamically. Whenever I execute this prepared statement, I need these two values to be supplied to my prepared statement. So, you will need to supply values to be used in place of the question mark placeholders. One represents the first and two represents the second and so on. So, you can see here we have an object of prepared statement with set int. So, here you can see that your sales is an int value and then your coffee name is a string value. Okay. So, for 1 I give 75 as the sale. So, for the first question mark I have taken question mark placeholder for 1 represents the first placeholder and then 75, 75 is nothing but the sales that has been made. So, I say update sales my prepared statement dot set string 2 to a particular value. So, it means that you can go and have a look on the sales is equal to 75 where coffee name is equal to Colombian. So, this is your first question mark value and this is the second question mark value which need to be supplied to a prepared statement. So, there is no restriction, there is no restriction that you can have any number of columns that could be done even it is not necessary that it could always be an update statement. You can also have a select statement. So, you can select as I told you if I want to select list of employees set of employees who belong to a particular department I can just only pass the department value. If I have my query with various parameters that could be assigned dynamically then I can go in for using my prepared statement. So, you can see here how to execute it. The return value of the execute update is an int here that indicates how many rows of the table were updated. Here it is assigned to n. So, I am giving int n that is number of rows that gets affected by this particular execution update sales dot execute update. You can see that here I do not have any parameter. So, it means that it is already compiled just when I give execute update the setter methods that I have executed already will be set and that will be executed your query will be executed based on the set values that is previously supplied. So, next is the callable statement. So, in this callable statement so this is particularly for calling a procedure. So, already we have seen how to run a static query. So, I can normally go in for using statements or else I can build a build a query based on some dynamic values and give it as a parameter to my statement or in case of prepared statement I can have a query for which I can pass the values dynamically using your uh, parameters which is assigned with some placeholders that is your question mark placeholder. So, using prepared statement you can run your static queries using your uh, statement you can run your uh, static queries using your prepared statement you can run your dynamic queries. So, other than this we also have callable statements which could be used in order to call a procedure that is already written compiled and which is ready for execution in the DBMS. Prepared statement just prepares the query that is pre compiles the query and you can execute it multiple times with different values whereas, callable I can call a procedure which is available in the database. So, among this we have seen about two 
two types of statements and we are yet to see about callable statement. So, in case of callable statement I need to write a procedure and then pass that as the parameter to my callable statement and then I can execute this. In this session we have seen about types of statements, two types of statements one is your statement and then prepared statement and also we have seen about how to process the result that is obtained by these two types of statements. So, it can be a boolean value, it can be an integer which represents the row count that gets affected by your query or it can be a result set. We have also seen how you can navigate through your result set and you can use that particular values that is obtained from the result set for some manipulation purpose and also we have seen some samples of the queries. So, in your forthcoming session we will see about callable statement and all the other uh, I, I mean all the other classes that is available in Java packages and from this session you will be able to answer the questions about types of statements. So, you can give the types of statements and how to obtain the results of a query, how to create and execute a prepared statement. Thank you.